Going forward, Sajad Karim, what can we say to uh, reassure nationals on both sides of the channel? One of the things actually that's quite frustrating about this whole episode is that many commentators are choosing to forget the realities in which we were dealing at the time. Right at the outset, it was made absolutely clear to the United Kingdom that there would be no talks and no negotiations until the point at which Article 50 had been triggered. Mm -hmm. Now, the very same people who were pushing for Article 50 to be triggered at that time are the ones today who are saying that maybe we should have prepared and negotiated far more before we triggered Article 50. Well, who is that? And when it comes to citizens, actually, Actually, they, they have been the biggest, uh, well, they are going to be the group of people who will suffer the most because of the very premature way uh, in which uh, we as a uh, United Kingdom rushed into this head on very soon after the referendum without actually thinking through the full implications of exactly what was involved here. We allowed the politics to set the pace rather than the technical details of the exercise ahead of us that was required. But having said that, in fairness to the United Kingdom, we have uh, given the assurances and guarantees uh, as a government that uh, EU citizens resident in the United Kingdom need. Uh, that hasn't been replicated um, from the European Union at this stage. Uh, there are, however, some uh, complications because uh, when it comes to issues of uh, British citizens living in EU countries, they are living in a variety of different EU countries and in a variety of different EU bases. So their uh, immigration exercise that needs to be carried out within the EU actually needs to be carried out in a number of member states on a number of variety of different bases. And that is why we still have some delay from the EU side on this.